Hi again, everybody. My name is Greg Anderson, and this is the Good Timekeeping Show with Greg Anderson. Recently, some folks have said they wanted me to talk about some of my vintage watches, watches you can't even get anymore. So I thought, well, okay, here's one you've seen already in some of my other videos. And obviously, it's not working correctly. It's not supposed to be flashing the time like that. So I think it needs a new battery. <laughs> Let's take a moment and change the battery, and then I'll tell you all about this watch. So it's fairly easy to pop this one open. I've got a little tool here. It looks kind of like a pocket knife, but they actually sell this for working on watches. So if I just pop, there's a little tab kind of right here on the back. Carefully pop this open. All right, there you go. And there's the inside of the watch. And what you see in here at first glance is pretty typical to what you see inside uh, a lot of other digital watches. Of course, the battery's held on by this stuff right here. And there's a tiny, tiny spring right there. You don't want to lose that spring. That spring makes a connection between uh, the watch electronics and the back of the watch. And without that spring, you don't hear a beep, the typical beep you'd hear uh, that maybe you, maybe you don't want to hear it. You can leave that spring out. But that's small, it can fall out, uh, very easy to lose. So you don't want to lose that spring while you're working in here. All I really want to do is release the uh, battery that needs to be changed. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a, a very small, just a sewing pin right here. And I'm going to put it right down into this little area here. And look, that just popped right up. So now that's loose. And maybe I can take, uh, you know, something simple like these tweezers and just kind of ease this battery out of this space. Okay, as usual, I'm going to guess that that probably would have been a lot easier if I didn't have to do it on camera, if I just did it to where I could see what I was doing and didn't have to show it to you. But with that battery out, now the module has come loose a little bit, so I need to kind of wiggle this back into place where it needs to go. And when I do that, I need to make sure that uh, right here where these pieces are pushed by the buttons, make sure those are depressed just a little bit so that I can get this down past where the buttons want to be. But once I'm satisfied that the module is lined up correctly and it's in place, it's not too difficult to slide a battery right back in where it's supposed to be. Right here like that. And then all I do is press down here and it'll just kind of snap into place. And now right here, that's tight and that's holding the battery where it needs to be. Now in the process of doing all this, uh, that little spring fell out just as I feared it would. But I was able to <laughs> keep it on this little piece of uh, microfiber cloth. So it didn't roll away and get lost completely. I just need to very carefully put that spring back where it belongs. And this can be very tricky. And I've, uh, I've goofed on this before myself. And so I've been very upset with myself sometimes when I've just about lost this spring. But there it goes. It's in place. Now all I have to do is just snap this cover back on just the way it was before and very gently, you know, line this up just right. And as soon as I'm satisfied that it's in the right place, this just snaps into place. And I'm going to do this without gloves because uh, now there's no danger of me getting my fingerprint oils in there. So let's see how that goes. Okay, Ooh, satisfying snap. And there we are. And now the watch is running. I think I'll do okay here. Now, since this is a radio controlled watch, it's already trying to receive the time information from WWVB. So what I did is I stopped it from completing its reception of atomic timekeeping. When it was not able to receive atomic timekeeping successfully, you can manually set the time. Start out with this button here. I push this and hold it and then things start to blink. And so I can scroll ahead or behind using these buttons here. And unfortunately, uh, you're just going to go minute by minute here and it takes a while. But once you get to the hour, it goes a little bit faster, it goes by tens on the minutes. So you can go ahead or backwards this way. If you have to go, you know, several, you know like 12 hours ahead or 12 hours back, it'll, it'll take a, t a long time to do that. But that's all you do when you set it to the right time. And then I stop that. I can zero in on an exact time here. And there I've set the time. Now, if I press mode, then I can set uh, the date. And look at that. Unfortunately, this is kind of the same way. I have to hold this down if I want to scroll ahead or behind. So if I want to get to the current date, 
which is now up to 2021. I got to keep holding and holding and holding and keep going ahead, you know, to the end of 1998 and then uh, keep it going until I reach 2021. So I probably won't do this. I'm just going to wait for more ideal reception conditions and let this thing set itself to the right time and the right date. But that's how you do the time and date manual setting. An interesting thing about this watch is that when it has successfully received its atomic time and date data, it won't allow you to manually set it uh, using this, you know, until maybe the next day or so. So that's kind of interesting, kind of a fail safe. If it has set itself, you can't manually set it to something else. I kind of like that because I want the watch to, uh, to, to be kind of insistent. No, I'm showing the right time and I'm not going to let you change it. When it's trying to set itself to the right time, there's a little icon there that kind of completes the radio tower, a little triangle right there. And then these indicate the signal strength. So it looks like it's pretty good signal strength. But I'm going to move this to a place where I think it might be a little bit, uh, might be a little bit re better reception right now. And I'll let this set itself and then we'll continue to talk about this watch. All right. So briefly, the story of this watch is that back in 1995, I bought my very first radio controlled clock, the Junghans Mega Clock. So I had, you know, an atomic time receiver of my own. I didn't have to use the WWV, you know, listen to shortwave radio to hear the correct time. I could get it right off of my clock that would automatically set itself. Found a couple other, you know, alarm clocks and other things that would do uh, atomic time automatically. But I really wanted a watch that could do it. And at the time, I couldn't find a watch except, uh, well, Jung Hans made one that was like $1,000 and it had no features other than setting itself to the right time. And I was hoping. Casio would come up with something that used the technology. And before they did, I found this instead. And this was only $99, which seemed like a real bargain at the time. So this one will set itself to the correct time with a built in radio receiver for WWVB. So I get that atomic time. It also has an alarm and a stopwatch and you know, features like that. So okay, let's pretend I just put the battery in which I did and it was able to set itself. So you can see a tiny icon right there, a little triangle that sort of completes the tower on this radio receiver that tells you that it was able to successfully receive atomic time the last time it tried and it set itself to the eastern time zone right there. Uh, that's the default setting on here. So there's the correct time and date for the Eastern time zone right now. So the first thing I want to do on this is set this to the mountain time zone because I'm in the mountain time zone. So to do that, I'm just going to well, first I need to scroll ahead the, the mode here. I'm going to go ahead to this mode right here. And that's the offset from uh, GMT or UTC Greenwich time. So when it's showing me this, I'm going to press and hold the set button right there for just a couple of seconds. And it allows me to change that. So I'm going to change it. Uh, well, I'm going to change it. I'm going the wrong way. You can see kind of a world map up there that's showing you which time zone you're selecting. So that's kind of nice. You can select, uh, you know, just about any time zone in the world, as long as it's something uh, a multiple of a full hour ahead of or behind uh, UTC. So I can scroll around like this or the other direction. And so I'm going to select the mountain time zone here. And now that is the correct time for me, seven hours behind UTC at this point. Also, if I press mode right here, I can select whether I want uh, daylight saving time to be off or on. And in this case, it should be off because that's automatic for uh, right now, this time of year, it would be off anyway. So I'm through setting it. I can push the set button and uh, then I can push the mode button. There's the stopwatch and, and now I'm back to back to normal. There's the correct time and date. One thing I've never really liked about this watch is the face is so busy. All this writing, all these colors, all this stuff here, it makes it so it's kind of to me, not a very attractive watch. If I'm wearing this, it just seems like, uh, you know, they, they could have done a better job designing this to make it pretty. But what could I say back, uh, you know, 1998, 99, whenever I bought this, it was the only thing I could get without spending many, many times the amount to get something like the Jung Hans mega clock. All right, so here we are. Okay, if I change modes, all right, let's go through this. There's my alarm mode. Okay, right now alarm is off. So I can select any time I want and have the alarm. If I hold down that button again, it's going to automatically turn on the alarm as I decide to scroll ahead. And unfortunately, it's a little bit time consuming to um, 
to change the time on this. You can go, you know, backward or forward on this. So it's just going to go one minute at a time. You can't just do like a full hour easily. But what you can do if I hold this button down, once it gets past the hour setting, it'll go by tens in the minutes. And so that's kind of nice. So if I go ahead and hold, keep holding this to say, you know, let's, let's just make it like a 7 a.m. alarm. Oh, I went too far. Now I can back it off. And uh, okay, now I've got a 7 a.m. alarm. And if I want to, at this point, you know, I, I press the button so it would stop blinking. So now I can turn it on or off using that button there. And you can hear a little bit of a beep. Uh, two, different, two different notes there, you know, kind of a higher pitch and a lower pitch to indicate what you're doing there. But anyway, alarm's ready to go. And now if I change modes, this is where it has what they call a date alarm. And the only thing this does is you choose a date, some day of the year, and on that day, all day long, um, you know, the date is going to be blinking. Or actually, there's a little icon that will blink to show you you've reached your date alarm. Look at that. It timed out and went back to the normal screen. So here I can change this to some other date. Uh, I don't find this alarm to be very useful because, you know, if I've got a special day coming up, like let's say it's my anniversary, I don't want to forget. So I'll set this to whatever that day is. And, uh, you know, then the date will blink on that day. And if I can't remember why it's blinking, I don't know, you know, so anyway, you can set that to whatever day you want for, you know, to, just to have the date blink. All right. Uh, okay, then back to the beginning. All right, let's scroll ahead through the modes here. Where am I? Okay, <laughs> sorry. Let's start. This is your regular timekeeping mode. Okay, so then alarm, date, alarm setting. This is where you can have, uh, again, it'll show you the offset from uh, UTC. And if you want to, uh, you could go back here to the, to the home screen for timekeeping. And rather than have the date on this line here, you can have UTC. So if you wanted to, that's kind of nice. Uh, it, it's a, even though it's an AM and PM display, a 12 hour display here for the local time, you can have UTC in, um, you know, in 24 hour time, right there, have them both on screen together. So that's kind of, you know, I, some people would find that very useful, maybe pilots, for example, because they want Zulu time when they're getting their information from uh, from the tower. And they also have the local time right there displayed. So, th so that's a setting in, again, the regular timekeeping mode date or UTC. All right, let's keep scrolling ahead here. Okay, that's the one where you can see uh, and set the uh, the time zone. And then here's your stopwatch. So uh, it's kind of standard as far as stopwatches go. You've got, uh, you know, hours, minutes and seconds and one hundredths of a second that they go there. And what this will do, I, I've, I've tested this out and it will go all the way up to 99 hours, 59 minutes, 59 seconds and uh, 99 one hundredths of a second. And then it will reach zero and it will stop itself. And it'll make a little bit of a beep when it stops itself if you've left it on for 100 hours. So that's kind of nice. And as it's running, you can see a uh, little, little animation there on the LCD. You, you also have the uh, split or a lap time button right there. So you can, you can see that while the stopwatch is still running. Go back there. If I stop it, then I can uh, reset it right there. So anyway, the, the, what I find, this is very similar to what you'll find on a lot of digital watches, your stopwatch functions. But I think it's kind of interesting and fun that when the stopwatch is running, it'll go all the way up to 100 hours and then it'll just stop itself. So, and it'll keep going, of course, when you're in other modes, you come back to the stopwatch mode and it is indeed still running. So uh, those are the main functions and features. And uh, well, it's, it's held up pretty well, you know, here I've had it for over 20 years and it's doing okay. Like I said, I never thought this was a very particularly good looking watch. And the funny thing is at the time I was very frustrated because as far as I knew, Casio did not make anything that was, uh, you know, a radio controlled watch or atomic time receiver. But it wasn't too long after I got this one that I found this one from Casio. And maybe I'll talk about this one in a moment. Because the thing about this one is even though it looks quite a bit different, and I think uh, overall a much more attractive watch, it turns out that the functions on this one are exactly the same as they are on this one. It's like they took the exact same electronics, attached them to a different LCD for the readout, 
and uh, you know, gave it a little bit more water resistance. This is 50 meters, and this one's probably, you know, you could splash some water on it, but you really wouldn't want to keep it uh, very wet. So it's interesting that uh, somehow the very first Casio radio controlled watch I got was actually just, uh, you know, you, you just dressed up the exact same electronics, or at least the exact same functions that are in here, and put them on here. So uh, yeah, I'll talk about that later. But anyway, I I really preferred this one. <laughs> but as you can see, they're still synchronized to each other. So they both work the same way. And that's kind of nice. This one has a, a backlight on and it's not anything too impressive. But let me just show you that real quickly. Okay, not the best demonstration here. But at least if I push this button, you can see that yeah, it lights up and that's that's a nice clear display only stays on for about a second or two. It's really not a bad watch at all. It's just that I think this busy looking screen makes it not very attractive, especially compared to this one that does exactly the same things. So I don't know, does this one need a new battery too? Maybe it does. Okay, we'll work on this in a moment. And I, you know, I could show you this, which will basically be the same information about this one, except, oh, it looks so much nicer, doesn't it? All right, that's all for now. I'll uh, have some more watch reviews and some, well, new episodes coming soon of The Good Timekeeping Show.